We'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. Hold on for just a couple more minutes. While you're waiting, please go download handouts at fergusonlibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes. There's both a handout and class files that you'll need to download and decompress. So just a couple more minutes and we'll get started. Okay, hello and welcome to the Ferguson Library Presents Learn How to Livestream Online with me, Frank Scornia. And hold on a second, I need to make a little bit of adjustment here. Uh -huh. uh, this is what I get for not testing things out a bit. Um, hold on. Let's do this. I don't know why. Hold on a second. Just need a slight modification here. Now I don't have that like wavy little background going on behind me. So, hello. So we are looking today at how to do live streaming online with uh, the OBS Open Broadcasting Software Studio. It's a free open source software. Uh, and so what I'm going to be looking through, what we're going to be looking through in this class here is kind of what is OBS and what it can do. We're going to be looking at uh, what equipment you need to get started with live streaming. Um, we're going to look at the interface and the terminology that OBS uses so that you're kind of familiar with it when you dive into it and start using it there, how, um, how different things work and, and where things are located on there. We're going to look at how to create and navigate scenes in OBS. We're going to create some very basic scenes that we're going to work with. And then finally, we're going to do have a little bit of talk about the different streaming platforms and ways to kind of set up OBS to kind of get to working on those there. So to start off, I want to say, uh, for, if you're attending the class here on YouTube Live, um, in order, if you have any questions during the course of the class, please type them into the chat. I will see them and I will answer them when I think there's a good time to answer the question. Um, what you are seeing, you are seeing a little bit of a delay from what I am, uh, what I am currently at. So when your question will come a little bit behind where I'm at, but when I see your question, I will go back and answer it there. I do recommend uh, that if you are going to follow along uh, through this class, please go to uh, fergusonlibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes, and that will take you to this website here. 
Uh, this is the Ferguson Library, uh, my, my online technology class website. Uh, has the upcoming class schedule. I need to update this here for our September-October schedule, so please come back uh, later this week and you should see the September-October schedule all available here. Um, they coming down, we have all the materials for the different online classes, and what you'll want to do is come all the way down to the bottom where it says learn how to live stream online. Click on this and it will open, it will kind of expand the little section here, and you'll want to download the exercise handout, which is going to be this PDF file here. Um, let me uh, make this more visible. There we go. So it'll be this PDF file here that will have uh, some basic information about OBS, uh, some links, and then the exercises that we're going to be following as we go through the class on here. And then uh, going back to here. Uh, and then this file here is the exercise files. Uh, this is a zip file, so what you'll want to do is you want to download it, and then you'll want to, in Windows, um, right-click and choose uh, decompress, and then so you can access the files. And so that'll have a variety of different files that we're going to work with, uh, some, some graphic files and a text file that we're going to work with through the course of this class. And then finally, there is a survey link here, uh, which will take us out to the assessment survey for the class. So if I click on this, you'll see this will actually go out to as soon as it loads. Here we go. So just kind of a quick kind of uh, kind of assessment and how you found the class. So I'll, I'll have this link available again at the end of the class on the screen, and then you can always come back to uh, the online dash tech dash classes uh, site to be able to uh, see the survey on there. So with that, let's go in and start taking a look at OBS. If you're going to follow along through the course of this class, I recommend going to this link here, uh, obsproject.com. Let me click on this, and this will take you to um, uh, the OBS Project's website. Uh, download the version that is appropriate for your computer, whether you're running Windows, Mac, or Linux, uh, and install it. Um, and once you install it, um, go through. There, there will be an option to do a quick setup uh, skip that because we're actually going to go through some of that setup kind of options there uh, itself. So let's get into and find out what OBS is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize you, minimize you, and we're going to go here. So when you first install OBS, uh, the OBS Studio, Open Broadcasting uh, Studio, uh, it will look like this. Uh, this is the screen that we're looking at here, and so just kind of a quick tour of what we're seeing here. The the main box that we're seeing right up here is the um, is the preview window. This is where you're going to be able to see what you're what you're going to be actually as you're streaming or recording. This is you're going to be able to see what you're recording here at this time, uh, and it also allows you to kind of see what things will look like as you're setting up the different scenes with the different sources. Uh, don't worry about those definitions. I'll kind of get back to those a little bit later. Uh, moving down on our controller here, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over there where that's supposed to go. There we go. Um, and we just, there we go. Uh, just rearranging some things on here. Uh, down here on the bottom left, we have our scenes panel. Uh, I'll be talking about kind of doing different things on the scenes panel and what scenes are in just a bit. Um, so when I mention scenes panel, I'm talking about this little section down here. Next to it, moving to the right, we have the sources panel. So the sources panel is, uh, sources are all the different kind of elements, all the different pieces that you have on the screen at a time. So sources can be a, um, it could be a webcam, it can be a, a game or a window on your computer, it can be um, a background image, it could just be an image. And you can see actually, if you look at kind of uh, the stream kind of going around, uh, what you're seeing there, you see my webcam image here, um, where kind of the box that I'm in right here. You see that, uh, that's an element. Uh, the Ferguson Library logo over in that corner there is another element that's on there. And then the display, everything that you're seeing here is yet another element. And those are all sources that I have currently working. I'm actually streaming this with OBS right now. And then, uh, so it's, I'm using OBS to talk about OBS. Uh, moving further to the right, we have our audio mixer. And so right now this is blank because we don't have any audio sources added in, but this is where you're going to be able to have control over the different audio pieces of your um, uh, of your broadcast or recording. So whether it's going to be sound coming from your computer or from a microphone uh, or other different audio sources, you'll see them all kind of listed here and you'll be able to control different volumes, put different properties or filters on things. 
Uh, moving over, we have scene transitions. So what does it look like when you when you change between different scenes? Right now we don't have different scenes and we'll, we'll look into this as we get further into the class and we ha we've set up different scenes. Uh, the transitions are just how it, how it changes between one transition to another. And then finally we have our controls panel over here and this is where you can see we can either start streaming, start recording, uh, there's a studio mode, which I, and I'll talk about uh, in just a second. And then and we'll get back into a little bit more of that later on towards the end of the class. And then the settings as well, too. And so before we kind of continue with uh, kind of looking at other things on OBS, I want to take a quick dive into the settings just so you can kind of see what's available there. And it's a little overwhelming when you first open it. Um, but everything kind of has its place. And over time, you kind of it, you learn uh, where things are. And as you as you get set up and more comfortable in OBS, you come into the settings a lot less because you get things configured the way that you want. Um, and you don't really have to go in and kind of change everything every single time. So when we first open it up, we're in the general tab for the settings. Uh, you can do things like choose what language the soft software is in, uh, the theme, you can change how kind of the overall look of OBS is. The default is this dark theme that we're seeing, but you can see I can go with kind of a different uh, coloration if I wanted to on here. Uh, we're just going to stay with dark though. Uh, moving down, we have the output, and so you can do things like decide, like, are you going to automatically record when streaming, or um, kind of different confirmation dialogues. So if you're worried about when your stream starts or stops, or accidentally starting or stopping, uh, you can have a con confirmation dialogue so that when you start it, it'll say, are you sure you want to start it? Or when you stop, it's like, are you sure you want to stop it? Kind of things. Uh, different things like source alignment snapping. This is how you can like move or arrange things around in your um, in your preview window when you're working with the different sources. Uh, play around with these here to kind of get comfortable with what you have. Uh, projectors. A lot of this other stuff here is going to be uh, is a little bit beyond um, what we're covering here in the class. But I do recommend as you get more comfortable with. Um, with OBS and in your live streaming, come in here and kind of see different ways that you can kind of tweak and set. And in the handout at the end, I do have a few links going out to some additional resources that if you want to continue this after the class, uh, these are the kind of places where you can continue your learning on there. So moving up, down we have our stream. Um, I will get in, I will get back to this here at the end of the class when I talk about the different streaming platforms. Uh, you can see right now because you're watching this on YouTube, I have this set up for YouTube, YouTube Gaming, um, but you can set different services here like Twitch, Facebook Live, uh, Instagram, all of those kind of different things you can set up through here. Um, moving down, we have our output. This is where you're able to set different settings for your output, and usually what happens is you'll actually be in simple mode. So simple mode just kind of gives you some simple uh, settings here. There is, uh, for the streaming, uh, the settings that you generally need to pay attention to and, and think about is things like your video bitrate. The video bitrate is the is the amount of data that you're uploading from your computer and sending out to the streaming service. Uh, you want this here to be kind of as high as you can get, but not overwhelming your internet connection. So usually the recommendation is to do something like do a speed test on your internet connection, and it will tell you how fast your upload speed is. And then you choose like a portion, like 60% of this, and you can set that here for the video bitrate. Um, you can see I have mine set at 2,500 kilobits per second. This is about standard, and I have been very successful with this. I haven't had a lot of issues with this 25 kilobits per second. I, it's, um, it's been very successful on my internet connection, going out to either here, YouTube, or to Twitch on there. Uh, encoder. Um, if, if you're not, if you don't really know what any of these means, leave them at the defaults that are there when you install it. I may have adjusted things. I can't remember what the defaults are. Um, but if you're not, if you're not comfortable, you're uncertain what it is, leave it the way that it is. Especially in simple mode, they'll, they'll kind of get it set up as e to make it as easy for you as possible. Um, audio bitrate. Uh, you do want to keep this here. About 160 is the max. This is kind of the audio quality that gets sent through. Um, any lower and you start getting kind of scratchier or kind of corrupted audio a bit. Um, but if you go too high, it just kind of overwhelms the whole connection um, and, and the encoder settings. So usually about 120, 60 bit right here is usually kind of a good area to go. Um, and then recording. So uh, OBS not only is a broadcasting streaming software, but it can also do to record computer videos to your computer. 
So whether you're recording something with a face cam, like I'm doing here, or you're doing, um, just you're, you're trying to record some sort of thing that you're doing on the computer. Maybe you're playing a game and you're trying to record playing the game, or you're trying to do like a tutorial or like a how-to kind of thing and you're, you're showing things. You can record all of that onto the computer record a voiceover or not record a voiceover you can but you can record all that and save it there obs is a really great piece of software not only for the streaming but for the recording and if you're interested in kind of more of the recording side of things um i do have a class that i'm going to be offering at the end of october it's going to be october i think 25th it's the, it's the last wednesday of october uh that's going to be kind of this class again but focused on recording rather than streaming um so there's the settings there uh, moving down, we have audio and kind of the different audio devices. Again, if leave these, if you're not comfortable with things are, just kind of leave these settings as they are right now until you get kind of more comfortable and you're working with things. Uh, video, this is where you get to choose kind of the size of the canvas. So the canvas is this black box that we have back here. Uh, the canvas is basically the space that's being presented, that's being sent out to the broadcast or the, the streaming platform. Uh, since my computer here right now, my, my monitor resolution is 1920 by 1080, uh, 1080p. Uh, this is set up to kind of capture the whole screen and, and show you my whole screen on here. Uh, you can also, if you want to, you can actually send like a smaller resolution. These are useful if you are having internet, internet issues and you don't want to send as much data, or if you're wanting to say, present just a small, smaller screen and show other things on the screen as well too. And we'll, we'll look at things like overlays a little bit as we're setting up our scenes. And then frames per second there. Um, a lot of people are pushing for things like 60 frames per second. So this is how many frames per second the video is being created or saved. Uh, so what happens is, is that in like one second, there are 30 frames being created here. Um, I prefer 30 frames per second because it puts less of a strain on the computer. But if you have a more powerful computer, a more powerful encoding system in your computer, uh, you could push it up to 60 frames per second, which is kind of what people are looking for nowadays uh, when it comes to online video. Uh, moving down further, we have hotkeys. Uh, there's not a lot here right now. A lot of stuff gets added to here as you start adding things like scenes and sources. Um, we're gonna come back and look at the hotkeys uh, near the end of the class after we've set up a bunch of stuff in the computer. Uh, but hotkeys are just kind of a really easy way to kind of access cer certain functions. So you can see I have a couple set here for starting and stopping streaming. Uh, so if I wanted to start the stream or stop the stream, I can just hit this keyboard combination on my keyboard. Uh, which is useful if I'm not, uh, if I don't have OBS easily available or I have to click out of it there and such, I, I can just keep the whatever I have on my screen visible and then I can easily exit or get into it. Uh, and the same thing with recording. There's um, uh, start recording. I, can, I have another keyboard key set up there. Other than that, I don't have any other kind of keyboard keys set up. Um, advanced OBS specifically does say that unless you really know what you're doing, don't really change anything in advanced. Um, I think the only exception, let's see, there was, what was the was one exception they had said? I was, I was looking at this earlier and I can't, oh, um, the file name, how it saves the, the file name on the recordings. That might be like the one thing that you might want to change. Uh, but other than that, unless you really know what you're doing, don't really do anything else in the advanced tier. Um, so that's our, that's the kind of the general settings. And we'll be coming back to the, the settings here as we progress through the class and I show you kind of different things that we're working on there. Uh, so going back, we're gonna go hit okay because we don't have to change anything. And now we're back to our uh, OBS window here. And so I just wanna kind of quickly kind of go over a little bit of some of the definitions. And these are on the, um, the handout. Let me bring this back up here. Uh, just some things that as I'm using this terminology through the course of the class, uh, you know what I'm talking about. If I do use any terminology that you're uncertain of during the class, please ping me in the chat and say, hey, what do you mean by this term? You keep using it. Um, and I will define what I'm talking about at that point there. So the first definition that we have on here is Open Broadcasting Software Studio, OBS. Um, so I'll be calling it OBS for the rest of the class. Just the easy way to do it. That's what it's pretty much known by at this point now. Uh, OBS Studio. And so it's free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. And the nice thing about it, it's, it is absolutely free. 
um, and it's open source, which means that there's a lot of people out there that are working on the code that to improve it, make it more efficient, make it better, add new features. And because it's also open source, it's, there's a lot of other people who have gone in and added in things like plugins and add-ons. So there's a lot of extra features that people have built that you can always kind of add to um, OBS. Uh, we're just we're not going to be looking at any of the plugins or add-ons. We're going to be working with just plain vanilla OBS here, which is actually what I tend to use uh, most often anyway, uh, because it's it's already a powerful, useful tool right out of the box. Uh, but it's 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 out there. It's it's free and it does just, it's a, it does what it needs to do really well. Uh, we have profiles. So profiles, um, if you if you're going to be doing a bunch of different things with OBS, so you're going to be doing things like recording or streaming or streaming on different services or recording different ways, like um, the profiles allow you to save settings. So when we were we were looking at um, all the different settings here. Um, I can save all of this into a profile and then I can change settings and then save them into a different profile uh, and I can then easily swap between those different settings on there. So things like um, changing maybe like my video bitrate on there or um, or different audio setup, I mean, whatever purpose is on there. I generally just have one profile that I tend to have set up uh, for what I'm doing, but as time comes along, I might develop other things that I might want to do and change and tweak and then I'll save different profiles. What's more important actually, is like profiles, but also for organization, are scene collections. So scene collections are a collection of scenes under one name. And so what happens is when you first set up for your streaming or recording using OBS, uh, you will we'll be creating a bunch of scenes. We'll be creating three scenes through the course of this class. Um, and what happens is, is that, and so that would be for the purpose that we're say for, for this class. And then you go off and you want to say do your own live streaming. You can sit down and you can uh, create a new set of themes or scenes, which will allow you to, um, and then you can easily swap between those two different scene collections based on kind of what you're doing on the computer or what you're doing in OBS. Uh, so OBS kind of allows these kind of flexibility and that you can do a lot of different things and you can kind of set things up for like a specific purpose and then save all that settings for that specific purpose and then you set things up for a different purpose and then you can easily set up go between one and the other without having to remember okay yeah I, I changed this setting I changed that setting I use this scene and this is where those things are um, you can easily kind of change and swap between those different kind of ideas uh, I keep using the term scene what is a scene so the scene is the view of the content being broadcast and it's made up of one or more sources and sources is the the next and last definition that I have uh, you can transition between the scenes using the scenes box or setting up hotkeys. So scenes, come back here. Uh, right now we just have one scene in our in our thing here, but you can have as many different scenes that you want. And they're just different looks of how the screen looks as it gets sent out to your streaming platform. Sources, and let me just actually pull up the definition that I have here for sources. So the sources are the different elements that your viewers will see and hear. So they can be video, image, text, audio, etc. So as, as I, was, I think I was describing earlier on the class, it's the different components that make up what your viewers will see on the screen. So for example, if you're watching this here on YouTube, uh, you'll see, you see OBS, you see the OBS screen here in front of me, but then you also see my face cam kind of floating up in like the, uh, the top corner. And you see like the Ferguson Library logo also floating up in the other corner. Uh, there we go. Point, it, point the right, right direction. There we go. That way. Over there. Yeah, there we go. Um, sometimes the, the web camera is kind of a little reverse, so I don't know exactly which direction I'm pointing. Um, those are different elements that I have on the screen showing up at the time. And I can put a bunch of different things. You can do things like uh, if, you, if you go and watch other people live stream, they'll put things like different what they call overlays which are things like borders and graphics that might provide additional information or just kind of make things look attractive. We're going to play around with that a bit as we go through. Uh, you can put images, we can put text. Um, there's a lot, you can, you can have a video on there, you can put a browser. Uh, there's a lot of different sources that you can pull in. And then there's plugins out there that will add additional sources as well too. So the way to kind of remember it is, is that um, you can, a scene collection has multiple scenes each scene can have multiple sources and then the source is a single piece of uh, of whatever's showing up on your screen and this will make more sense as we start working through the exercises 
So that there, let's actually, so if you went and downloaded the handouts, handout here, uh, you'll see that the second page here, we have a section here that says, that starts with exercises. Uh, what I'm gonna do actually is if you want to follow along, I'm gonna give you a few minutes. Um, this is the other thing I tend to do with, um, with YouTube for if you wanna follow along uh, live with me is I will um, I will give a couple minutes at certain times for you to kind of go through and, sh and, and kind of do the skills that I just demonstrated on the screen. So at this point, um, I probably need to give you time to go download OBS and install it and then um, and then kind of get it set up and then we can start the exercises. So let's take about three minutes and um, then we'll be able to get started. Actually, we'll say about four minutes because that will uh, put us right at the half hour. Uh, for me. Uh, so take four minutes, download OBS, uh, get it installed, uh, go download the uh, the handout and the exercise files from fergusonlibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes. Um, and then we will continue. If you have any questions about any of this here, please pop them in the chat. This is a good time to ask the questions and I'll be right here waiting. And I just realized I meant to actually spend some time talking about the equipment. I actually do not have that in my notes. That's really funny. I forgot to put that in my notes. Um, I meant to actually, and so while you're actually going and downloading uh, the the OBS software and the handout and files, uh, let me just kind of give a quick uh, brief talk about uh, the equipment that you need for live streaming. So you don't really need a lot. People think that you need to have like a really fancy setup there. I have a little bit fancier setup myself because I've bought a lot of different kind of equipment for that there. But at its heart, really what you need actually is a computer. Um, you don't really need anything else uh, unless you want to start doing additional things. So the computer will allow you to take whatever's on the computer, uh, whatever's on the screen or whatever's in the window or game that you choose, uh, and broadcast it out, usually with the audio coming from the computer. There, that's, or so if you want to um, broadcast or record, that's all that you need. You can do it with a laptop, you can do it with a desktop computer, you don't really need any fancy equipment. Now, if you want to start adding different capabilities to your str live stream or kind of different features to your live stream, then you need to start thinking about some other equipment. So one is if you wanted to have a face cam, like I have here on my stream, I have my face cam, where you're seeing my face right here. Um, I have a webcam connected to my computer that is capturing my face, and then OBS is then adding it to the broadcast and sending it out to YouTube. Now, if you're using a uh, notebook or laptop computer, uh, a lot of times now, most of them come with a webcam built into there, like right up the top, or sometimes it's down at the bottom of the screen, but like right there, there's a webcam already built in. Uh, laptops also tend to have uh, microphones built in. So you have the, the webcam and the microphone from the laptop, which then allows you to present your face if you want to, or whatever you want to have the camera pointing at, as well as speaking or kind of adding your own voice to the broadcast, the live stream broadcast. Uh, if you have a desktop computer, they may have, or like an all-in-one, they may have the camera built in, camera and microphone built in. Uh, usually these built-in cameras and microphones are not always the greatest quality though. So sometimes if you really want to get into the hobby and continue with the hobby, uh, you'll want to kind of upgrade and look at some other different equipment. So you can get better webcams that, that are able to capture things like higher resolutions, whether they're capturing 1080p or 4K. Uh, you may want to have an external microphone so that you're not using the microphone built into the computers. computer. Uh, computer microphones 
are notoriously not really that great. Um, and what happens is a lot of times they're, they're, they're on the screen, uh, they might be close to the speakers of the computer itself, and so there might be kind of interference or there might be um, uh, just, um, just extra noise kind of coming in. So you can get an external microphone, and you know, I'm wondering if I can show, I wonder if I can get this up onto my screen here. So you can see, yeah, I, oh, and my audio just went out. Uh, so you can see I have a microphone here. It's hard to see. My camera's not really catching it because I have it kind of out of view there. But I do have a separate larger microphone attached to my computer, which is just a better quality microphone uh, for live streaming. Uh, so th those, those are the kind of, again, the, you have the basic tier. You just need a computer. And then to start adding different things, you need to have a, um, a microphone if you wanted to be able to kind of speak or kind of add your own voice into your broadcast. A camera if you want to start adding your presence into the web, into the broadcast beyond the, um, uh, uh, beyond just your voice. Uh, if you just want to live stream with just your voice, that's perfectly fine. A lot You can do whatever you want. I, I'm not going to say you have to have this uh, onto your screen and this is how you have to present things. And then moving up, you, you start looking at kind of other kind of different equipment that might be needed. So if you wanted to, um, if you're just looking at broadcasting something that's on your computer, so you're showing a tutorial about how to do something in, um, for me, like I've done tutorials in Microsoft Word or Excel, um, I just need what's on my computer or, or playing a game. I, I tend to, I've done live streaming with games and I play the game on my computer. I'm able to capture that in OBS and send that out. But sometimes you want to be able to live stream from different sources. So, for example, if you wanted to live stream from a gaming console, you would need to get a, what they call a capture device. And capture devices are either external, so they can plug into like a USB um, or other port on your computer, or they are internal. It's a card that you install into your computer that will allow you to bring in uh, video and audio information from a device outside of your computer. Uh, so that's if you want to kind of expand beyond just what's on your computer to broadcast or record. Uh, some other things that people commonly use for streaming equipment wise is uh, you'll notice behind me it's, it's transparent. You can see uh, the, the window behind me. And the reason for that there is, is I don't have a window behind me. Um, I'm actually sitting in front of a, a green screen. So uh, there is, it is actually, in fact, actually, let me wonder if I can, okay, here we go. If I do this, you can see actually I have a green screen behind me and we'll turn that back on so that you're not distracted by that there. And what that does is OBS allows me to like blank out or make that green screen transparent behind me. So you're able to see, so I'm just a floating head instead of a floating head with a background behind me. And the nice thing about something like this means that, um, that since I have, there, there's more of my room behind me, you're not seeing the room behind me. You're not distracted by what's behind me. And if anybody were to like pass or walk behind me, they can do it behind the green screen and not disrupt the video on there. So those are things that kind of as you go through uh, and you start adding, including into the uh, the hobby uh, that you can start uh, like adding on to and kind of building on. Uh, some other piece of equipment that I've kind of collected over time is I, I do have like a, a microphone arm that kind of just makes it so I can push my microphone out of the way or adjust it to kind of a more comfortable position uh, instead of something just sitting on my, um, my desk. Um, I have a, a little switch box, which I can't raise up for you to see on there, that allows me to program in uh, special functions. And there's a single pre button press. I can do things like I can easily um, uh, change over to this view. Instead of having to do like a keyboard shortcut or having to click anything in OBS, I can just hit a button on there and it will take me to this setup here. And then I can easily go back to my demo. So there's, there's equipment out there. It's because streaming has become hugely popular, uh, there is a, a, a there's a, a market and a demand for these products, and there's companies meeting them out there, uh, which is pretty cool because it's they're making it easier to get into and do live streaming and and recording, uh, and they're making it more fun. Uh, it's it, when I first started doing this here, um, it was uh, comp it was more complicated setting up OBS. I and a lot of the help, a lot of the uh, the resource files and the help files, they weren't really out there. And so there was a lot of kind of figuring it out as I was going along, reading forums, people answering questions. And now there's a lot more that will kind of guide you through, take you step by step on things. Like actually what I'm doing with this class here is kind of taking you step by step on there. I, I wish I did have something like this class uh, or this video that I'm creating here 
uh, to watch when I started off uh, doing this kind of thing. So it's becoming easier to do, which makes it more fun. And it, it becomes you're able to do a lot more different things with it there. So that's just a brief thing. And I think I realized I might, um, by the end of this week, actually update this handout to include a section on the equipment and kind of the stuff that I talked about there. Um, so if you are interested on that there, come back to a, and download this handout probably by the end of the week. See if there's an update and I should have something updated on there. Um, it's kind of, I realized I didn't do that. So let's get back. So now that you should have had time to go and download OBS and install it. Uh, again, skip there. There's like a quick startup option that it gives you when you first start it up now, whether you want to do for streaming or recording. Uh, skip that now because uh, we're going to go through and kind of do our own setup there. I do recommend though that uh, after this class, the best thing to maybe do is uninstall it and then reinstall it again and go through that quick setup there for your own purposes. Um, because it is useful and it's a good tool that's on, on OBS and I don't want to and uh, it might be able to help set up things that I may not cover in this class here. So let's get in and let's actually start working with our exercises. Because uh, this is what we're here for. Is we're actually looking at how to use this software here. Um, I will warn that I think there might be times where um, my OBS screen here might disappear because um, I'm it doesn't like the fact that I'm running it twice uh, and so it will uh, uh, and so it's sometimes when I've been when I was working on putting together this class it just kept kind of closing on me randomly I didn't click or closing it just closed um, but hopefully we won't see that too much going on so I've done the brief tour so we have our big preview window here we have our different panels under here uh, one of my uh, one of my recommendations when you first start off is is just so that because these things here these panels if I click I can actually click and move these around I can actually take them and move them around in different kind of places uh, which is a really nice function that did not do what I wanted to do um, but it's also really easy to accidentally grab them and move them actually, I want the audio mixer to be a bit larger scenes you can be small sources you can be small Oh yeah, audio mix. Audio mixer is really big down. I don't want it that big. There we go. Okay. I want to make you a little bigger. Yeah, there we go. That, that's that's good enough. Um, as you can see, it's really easy to grab and move them around. So what we're going to do first, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the, I believe it's the view menu. So the view menu on the top. We're going to come down to docs and we're going to come to lock UI. And what that is, you can see the like the little like um, the little uh, icons that were in the uh, the top corner, these little icons here, they disappear. And what that does is that prevents being able to drag or move these things around. Um, you can, once you get, if you can go in and tweak things like, so if you don't need to have the audio mixer so large, or you don't want to have like the scene, tra whatever you want to do, you can kind of set it up on yourself and then lock it so that you don't ever like change it or move it around. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we are going to create our scene collection. And right now we only have one scene, the default scene that kind of comes with that doesn't have any sources. But what we're going to do is we're going to create our first scene collection. So as we create scenes, they get saved in the scene collection. This is usually kind of the first thing that you want to do. So you'll come up here to the scene collection menu up on the top. And you're going to want to actually create a new, uh, you're going to click new. And in here you're going to type in Ferguson library class. Uh, so I've already done that. Actually, I'm gonna actually you know what, hold on. Let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna actually go in and change over to. Oh God. Um, yeah. Don't mind this right now. Um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna remove this. Yes. So that I can create it too. Okay. So uh, this actually, interesting enough, is my my normal one that I'm using here for the class. So you can see all the different things that we'll add. Um, plus we get this cool infinity effect. Um, but I'm getting sidetracked. Okay. So we're gonna click new, and we're gonna type in Ferguson library class okay there we go so now we are in we have our ferguson library class scene collection so this is all the scenes that we create for this class will live in the scene collection you can see actually that it, how easy it was for me to change between different um different scene collections um it's nearly instantaneous so like i have a scene collection for library instruction so when i'm teaching these classes on youtube i've created a bunch of different scenes uh, and some examples of those scenes are, for example, I have uh, this view here that has me um, presented here. Um, so you're just seeing my face and kind of information about the Ferguson Library. I have my demonstration screen. Um, I have 
Uh, you can't hear me there and such. I have a be right back screen. And so what we're going to do is I always recommend that when you are live streaming, uh, the three main scenes that you have, you can set up and have more scenes if you want to. Uh, you can set up as many as you want. Um, but the ones that I recommend to have is have your live scene. So the scene that's going to be your main one that you're presenting. And you might have multiple live scenes depending on what you're um, what you're focusing on. So for example, for my library instruction here, I have the live stream that's showing the demo of my screen here. And I have my face cam here. I have the Ferguson library logo. And then I have a live stream. I have, I have this live scene here where the focus is, is actually me talking to you without any kind of other distracting things kind of going on. Uh, so I have those two different live scenes, but so you'll want to have at least one live scene that has what you're broadcasting as you're presenting it there. Uh, you want to have a, a pre-show or an intro or what they or what is also known as a home scene. And what the home scene is, is it's, it's basically the, um, what you'll show on the screen before you get started. So it's, it's kind of like the pre-show kind of thing. And so you, you probably saw when I was, uh, if you came in and joined the class early, um, I had... Hold on, hit me the wrong buttons. Okay, I had this screen here kind of playing, and I had music playing in the background, so it was kind of like a little pre-show kind of thing, but it was presenting information, and it was letting you know that the stream is working, it's running, and that it will be, uh, uh, and it will be starting soon. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that you want to, and we'll be, so, and then the other thing that you want to have is like a be right back or a pause. So if there's ever any time, during the course of your stream, actually, hold on, let me get back to here. Um, if there's ever any time as you're going through the course of your stream, you need to get up and leave the camera, or you need to do something that you don't want to see people see on your screen, uh, you can change to the Be Right Back screen uh, so that people, again, know your stream is still active, that you're still going to be there, uh, that you'll be back soon, but you're not sharing any other information or showing anything else onto your screen. So let's go back to my demo here. And we're going to be back to, we've created our scene collection and called it Ferguson Library Class. So now we're going to start creating the live scene, because that's going to be our most complicated one that we're doing uh, in this class. Uh, the other two, the, the, the home screen or the intro scene and the, um, the be right back scene are going to be really basic. Um, but for this one here, we're, uh, we're going to be kind of adding in our most elements. And so it's, it's, it's a good practice one to start with. So we're going to go down and under the scenes here, you can see we already have one scene listed named scene. It's not a very useful name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on scene and I'm going to get my right click menu here. And you can see there's a bunch of different things uh, in the right click menu. Um, the thing that we want right now that's important is we want to go to rename. So we're going to click rename and then I'm going to type in live because this is going to be our live scene. Uh, and so I suggest when you ever, when you have the opportunity to name things, you'll see we'll be able to name scenes, we can name sources, be descriptive so that you're not sitting there and looking at, say, like three different like displays uh, and you're not really certain which one it is. Because you have to think that when you're presenting live and you might be changing between a lot of different things, uh, you want to make things as easy as possible to see what you're changing between without having to think or guess between what you're doing on there. So I'm going to hit live, I'm going to hit enter, and so now my scene is now the live scene. Now the scene right now is just this black box. It's, there's nothing there, there's nothing being demonstrated or shown out to the viewer. So we need to start adding sources to the scene. And so sources, again, as I mentioned, are all the different elements that make up the scene. So a good um, analogy to kind of think about this here is that if you, say, are sitting in the theater and watching a play, and you're sitting there and you look up on the stage and there's a bunch and what happens is on the stage are a bunch of different parts that make up the scene that you see on the stage so there might be a backdrop that's hanging down behind everything else that might show like the countryside there might be a part of a wall built here that might show that okay it's the side of a barn or side of a house there'll be um there might be like props or other set pieces. So there might be a table set out onto the, uh, onto the stage and chairs around that table. There might be things on the table. There might be plates and silverware and glasses. Um, and so all of those different props and those different set pieces, those are the elements that are making up the scene. And then you get the actors onto the scene. 
and the actors have themselves and they have their voices presenting on there and then they also have their costumes so you're seeing all those all those different elements are like the sources that we're using here in uh in obs i'm, I'm kind of pushing this in, uh, this metaphor a bit far but those are kind of those different kind of things those different pieces and so when you're thinking about building your scene in obs you th think and think about that theater stage um and all the different parts that make up the scene that kind of shows what this what the uh, the play is going to be presenting to you and you're going to be doing that here. sorry i keep scratching my nose my nose is really itchy for some reason um but um and so that's what we're going to be doing so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to this this black background is not a very useful uh display uh it's not a useful thing on there and such um and usually what happens is if you're seeing black on a live stream it usually means something's not going right and so i always like to either um put a color back here or to i actually i tend to put a, a neutral picture behind um behind myself so that if if my my other elements my other sources i'm showing on there said don't quite fill up the screen uh there's still something back there it's not just black um and so i actually i i typically actually use a photo of jupiter um i found a really good photo from nasa of jupiter that i have kind of filling up my my screen behind but tonight we're just going to use a color on there so we're going to add first thing we're going to do then is we're going to add a color source to our background here and now I've taken 45 minutes to get, and we're going to be adding our first thing in. So we're going to come down to sources, and on the bottom of sources, you can see there's a little toolbar down here. And the important thing that we're going to be using right now is going to be using this little plus key. So this is the plus. This is add a source. And I open this up, and you can see the variety. There's a wide variety of different sources that are available in OBS. And all of these different sources are different pieces that we can add. And we're going to, we're going to explore several of these here, and I'll explain some of the other ones. Uh, that we're not using. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come here and it's going to be this one here. We're going to do color source. So I'm going to hit color source and this cre this opens up the create select, select source dialog box. Uh, get very familiar with this dialog box. This is what we end up, uh, uh, you end up seeing and kind of working with this a lot there. There are two options in the create select source box. You have the create new where you're able to create a new source or there is add existing. And so every time that you create a source of a certain type, so like right now we're creating a color source. The next time I want to add a color source into a, say, a different scene, um, this one that I create will show up here. And I could use that same one with the same settings. Um, and I'm trying to think, I don't think we're, I don't think I have anything in the exercise really showing that there, but you'll see actually, um, you know, we'll see it with something when we create the uh, the the intro, the or the uh, the home, the intro scene, or the uh, the be right back scene. We'll see those things on there, and such. So, right now, just just know that you, when you create a scene, um, you'll see that listed with other types in this ad existing. But right now, because we don't have anything else on there, we're going to create a new scene, and we're going to actually name this here. What do I have it on here? We're going to name it as live background, and this is what I mean by having things um, uh, kind of be descriptive on your naming. This is just by looking at this name here, I know that this is the background that I am creating for the live scene. When I'm in, uh, when I'm in the home or intro scene, or I'm in like the back, be right back scene, uh, I might, I'll put a different background in there and such, and I'll name them appropriately for those backgrounds. So then when I know I'm looking at say colors or images, I know where they're being used on my, um, uh in my in my scenes in my scene collection now if it's something that i might reuse so it might show up in this ad existing that i might reuse so for example things like the the webcam view something i might re reuse in other scenes uh then i'll then i just have say just webcam and then it's able to show up and i can view and i can then view it in other scenes um, we are not going to be adding a webcam into the scene here because i found when i'm demonstrating here it actually breaks my webcam on the stream as well too uh just the kind of the limitations of what we're doing uh with this class here if i was doing this class live uh in our computer lab i'd be able to show that there but i'm getting off topic again so we're going to put in live background as the name and i'm going to click the ok button and so what i'll do now is now you see actually my black background has become a white background uh and we have the properties for live background so this is the normal workflow when you're adding a source to a scene is that you get the create select source box and then you hit OK and you'll get the properties box that we have here. Now different sources are going to offer different properties. 
Uh, in this case here, um, a color source, the, obviously the property that we're going to be able to work with is the color as well as the size. And so you can see right now this defaults to the 1920 by 1080, which is the size of my, uh, my screen here. And you can see this red box with the handles around it here is filling up the whole thing. If I wanted to, I could make this smaller. And you can see as I make this smaller here, like this is rising up. We're seeing a bit of the black down there. I'm going to keep this because I want this to be the background for the whole thing. So we're going to keep this at the full size. I don't want white though. White is a very bright color. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do select color. And we get our little color selection thing. And you can choose uh, kind of whatever color you want to do here. You can you can set uh, you can choose something from the color palette over here. You can if you have a specific color in mind, like a specific color that you found that you really like, you can you can set it by either the RGB, the red, green, blue values over here, or using the the hex code down here. Uh, for the course of this class, we're just going to use one of the um, uh, kind of the basic preset colors here, and I'm actually going to go with this kind of like light tealy green here Because um, I just think it looks nice. It's a nice kind of neutral cool color that kind of shows up and it, it's different than the black that we had before So I selected that there uh, you can see it actually gives me a hex code here So if it's something like if you like this color and it's something that you want to kind of make like a, as a motif or a theme throughout your um, throughout your scenes you're creating I would actually make a note of this. I would read the FF00A7F. Wow, there's actually, why are there eight there? That should be six, whatever. Um, but I, I would actually like write this down and, and, then, and then know that code so that I'm able to easily grab that color, or use that color again in the future. But for right now, we're just gonna, I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see my background, instead of being that black, is now my kind of green tealy color that I chose. And you can see down here on sources, I now have live background, the source that's written there. Now you'll notice on the source, there's now these two little icons sitting next to it. There's this eye. And what this eye does is this tells me that whether or not the source is visible on the screen. So if I click the eye, I turn it off. So the, 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 sor the, the source, the, the color source, the color that background that we put, it's still there. It's just no longer visible. Um, so I can turn it on or off. And then the lock, it obviously it locks it in place so that you can't accidentally move it. Because like right now where it's at, if I click, I can drag it around where I want it to go. I can resize it by grabbing one of these handles and kind of resize it as I want to do. But And so that's useful when I'm first setting it up and putting it into place. But then I don't want to accidentally move it when I'm, say, setting up other pieces on the um, in my scene here. So what I'll do now is I'll lock it, and now it's locked in place. So now I can't move it, and I can't resize it either. So th that's kind of the process that you'll go through. Is you'll create the scene, you'll put it into place, you'll kind of get it arranged or organized the way that you wanted to do, and then you'll lock that source so that uh, so then you don't accidentally move it again. Uh, just but you can but it's really easy if you need to like move it around in the future like suppose on on the my demonstration here what you're watching here I decided that my my face cam is actually blocking something important I can come in and I can move my face cam if I need to into another location uh, so that I'm no longer blocking the information that I think is important for you to see I'm gonna go put you back there <laughs> Uh, and I'll lock that again. Uh, so you can, I can do those different, you, so you can do those things, you can do those things live on stream. You just saw me move myself live on stream. So you have that control with OBS to kind of uh, have things where you want them to be, when you want them to be there. So let's uh, move on and we're going to start adding some more sources to the scene. We're going to continue building the scene. Uh, now it's it's useful to think of when you're building the scene as kind of building things in layers. So when you um, when you're building things in layers, you have your bottom layer, and then you're you're building something on top of that, on top of that, on top of that there, and that's what we're doing here. So we so the thing is is everything's kind of like right now our background, being the first source is at the bottom or at the back. It's like the back wall of this kind of scene that we're creating. So again, if we're going back to my play metaphor, this is that backdrop that's hanging behind everything else. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put something in front of that there. Uh, so we're going to put, um, what did I say that there was? There was like a, like a building, like parts of a building. We see the frame of a building around. So what we're going to do is we're going to add actually an, an overlay. An overlay is um, 
in, in, in streaming terms is graphics and text that, um, that show up around the piece that you're displaying. Uh, around or on the, uh, the piece that you're displaying. So overlays can be things like borders, it could be text, it can be information. Um, my webcam, my face cam thing here and such can be considered part of an overlay on top of the, the view that you're seeing there. Um, the, the Ferguson library logo that I have in the other corner is definitely an overlay element. Uh, people, if you, if you go and watch anything on stream or, or on, on Twitch or YouTube, people streaming there, they'll have things like they'll have subscriber counts or like, subs like the new subscribers when they get added in, they'll pop up and say things on the, whether there's donations, sometimes people will put the, the chat on there and all of those are overlay elements, overlay sources. Uh, for the course of this class, we're actually going to keep something very simple. We're just going to put a border around our, um, uh, around our image here. So we're going to just go to put a simple color border. Um, and what I've done is I provided for you in the, um, do I still have the folder open? I don't. Let me go quickly. Uh, let me open up the folder here. Uh, OBS demo files. So I have created, you can see actually right here, I have created a, if I open this up, what is it going to open up in? Uh, Photoshop. Okay, so when I open this up here, you'll see I've just created a very simple border for us to use for this class. So this is available in the, the OBS demo files. And so it's just a simple blue border. So we're going to go back to OBS. Um, and what I'm going to do, and so it's an image. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to here to the plus add source. I'm going to click plus and I'm going to choose image. And you can see there's a couple different things. There's an image and then there's an image slideshow. Something like the image slideshow might be really useful if you're doing, um, if you for like your 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 intro scene or your be right back scene that you can say put something like an image slideshow as the background and have different images kind of show up. It's like while you're be right back, so while your viewers are waiting for you to come back and and view what you're doing, uh, you can have like a slideshow going across it. They're, they kind of keep them entertained or kind of show different elements. Um, if you're into things like advertising, you could put ads into that slideshow. So while you're gone, so it's like, okay, let's take a commercial break and go off. You could have like still ads playing through, um, just as a suggestion of kind of different ways that you can use this technology. But in this case, we're just going to add an image. So we want a still image. So I'm going to click image. And so once again, we have our create select source box like we had before. I'm going to name this as what are we going to name it? I'm going to name it as border overlay. And once again, it's a descriptive name that tells me that it's a border because it's going to border around my whole window. And second, that it's an overlay. So it's a, so it's not a background. It's something that's going to lay on top of everything else, but it's not also going to be an active display element. Uh, you can see automatically there's a box down here that says make source visible. That means it's automatically going to show up. If it's something that you just want to put in there but not be visible yet, you can turn it off and it'll show up as being hidden or invisible when it first shows up. In this case, we'll keep the make source visible ch box checked. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have my properties window here. And this is a little different than we saw with the, the color source. The color source had uh, a choice for a color and a size. This here just has a, a um, a place to put an image file. And we have a little browse button. So we're gonna click browse. We're gonna get our typical Windows navigation. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna browse to the folder where I have the demo file. So wherever you downloaded the demo files and saved it uh, and, and decompress it, open it up, uh, go there, open it up. And in there you'll find this OBS demo overlay.png file. So we're gonna click that there. Um, and then I'm gonna hit open. And you can see here, this is a preview of what it looks like. And so there it is. Um, and to give an idea about where I got this border from, uh, I'll just show you a little bit of the workflow that I did to create, to show you how, kind of how easy uh, doing something like this is, is I actually just, I went into, um, uh, I went into PowerPoint because I find PowerPoint is actually very useful for kind of creating these kind of layout type uh, setups because everything kind of locks in place and it makes things you can line things up. There's like guidelines that make things line up really well. If you want to learn how to do some of that stuff in PowerPoint, uh, we have a PowerPoint class in uh, I think the end of September, actually basic PowerPoint is I think the end of September or early October. So join us then. 
Um, and so then I just created this rectangular and then such, and then I opened it up in uh, in Photoshop and I re I made the center transparent. I removed the center section so that you can see through it. And you can do that in any of your basic image editors. Um, I just happen to have Photoshop, so that's what I tended to do. So I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll notice that the, the border now, it doesn't go completely around the size because it's too small. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a 1080, it wasn't 1920 by 1080 as it was created. So what I'm going to do now is I need to resize it. And the easiest way to do that there is I can come, you can notice around the, on um, this red box around it, there are six what they call handles, actually eight what they call handles. I always think there's six, there's actually eight. There's eight handles. And so the handles allow me to resize it uh, in a specific direction. If I grab this one over here on the side, I can actually, so this is going to keep its aspect ratio. So it will actually, um, usually what you do is you'll grab like the corner ones and then you can kind of drag them to like fit the size that, you, that you're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down and connect it down into the bottom corner there. And now you can see I have a nice border going around the whole uh, scene here. So we have our we have our background image there, which means that if I don't fill up the center space, we'll still have kind of this pleasant teal green. Uh, behind um, instead of just like a black empty void um, but then I have a border that's kind of going around everything that we're displaying there and the nice thing about doing something like this border here is, is that this is now a solid color going around so if I wanted to put something like text which we will be doing we're going to be putting text instead of putting if I put text say over the video that I have here sometimes that text may not be readable or legible because the colors clash or they um, they fade into each other or they meld whereas up here I can put text into this border around uh, so that it's always visible and it'll always have that consistent background on there so that, that's one of the reasons why you want to kind of think about maybe doing like a border or like an overlay around there it also helps kind of break things up is that okay I can I can now put my my display here and then maybe I can put like different pieces over here on the border um, there's different kind of design things you can do. Now, if you're really getting into live streaming, you can go out there. There are websites out there that people more creative, people who are more creative than I have, have actually created uh, actually really good overlay sets and themes. So what happens is you'll get things that like, uh, you'll have like animated borders, and animated notifications, all this stuff. And you can either get the people who have created them for free or you can buy them. People actually sell this kind of stuff and make good money on these kind of things. Uh, you can also get people, you can actually pay somebody to custom create like overlays and animations for you as well too. For the course of this class, we're going to stay very simple. Uh, we're just going to use kind of these tools that I've created here. And so now we have our border going around. And because this is in place and I don't want to accidentally move it or resize it, I'm going to come down and I'm going to click the lock window. So now it's locked into place. So now I have my two pieces here. and, and Remember I was talking before about how everything is set up as layers. So now these are layers. So the, the, um, the live background here is at the bottom layer and it's at the bottom of the list. If I go in and move this up, oh, let's move this up. I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna move it up. You can see now that it's actually blocked out the border that I have because now it's, it's sitting on top and because it's a larger, it, it's, it's blocking the thing that's on below. So now, so you're able to kind of change the layers and kind of stack things on top of each other. And so that's kind of like what I've done with the view that you're seeing on here is I have my webcam view, my face cam, sitting above a higher layer than the screen, than my display screen that's on there. So that the display screen's not blocking my face cam. Um, and that was, remember I was talking about how OBS just kind of closes on me? That's what it just did. Uh, launch anyway. Fortunately, things actually save automatically as I'm doing them, so I didn't lose any work. But yeah, uh, that was just the case where it was closing on me, closed on me automatically. Sorry about that. Uh, we might have that happen a little bit more as we continue in class. Okay, so let's continue adding sources to our uh, scene here. Uh, actually, what I need to do is I need to move my background back down below. So now, okay, now we have our layering again. So we have our border on top of the background. And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to add a, we're actually going to add a, um, a, a, a capture. Uh, so a capture is the live content that is, is going into OBS that's then going to be sent out to the, the broadcast. So I'm going to open up the plus here and you'll see there's a bunch of different things in here called capture. Uh, the, the four 
that are kind of important to pay attention to in this case, because right now we're just thinking about videos and images. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about audio a little bit later. There's four here that are important to pay attention to. So the first is display capture. And so what display capture will do is it will capture whatever's on your monitor, uh, whatever's on the screen that you choose to be in that, to, to capture in that display capture. And so that's actually how I have this live stream set up is I have a display capture. So anything that's on my monitor, you see on the broadcast. And so that's why you saw my, my desktop, you saw my background, you saw the windows I had open when I had to reopen up OBS. You saw everything that was background in the background there. Next one is game capture. Now, game capture, is, because the software and live streaming is predominantly used for video game streaming, what this does is this will recognize when the, um, uh, if you start up a game on the computer, it'll recognize, hey, that's a game. Let me grab the information, the, what's that game there and such. And it won't show anything else. So it won't show the background or your icons or any other windows. It will just show that game. So you could say, have that game there and then open up a browser and see the browser. You'll see the browser on top of the game, but your, your viewers on the other side of the broadcast will not. They'll still only see the game. Um, I have found this game capture to be a little finicky. Sometimes it doesn't recognize that what you have is open as a game. Um, and so it kind of, I, I recommend using it because it's, it's kind of, it's definitely the easiest way to, if you're going to do video game streaming, it's definitely the easiest way to grab the game and sh show it on there. But sometimes it doesn't always work that well. And so you might have to use some of the other capture options. Uh, the next one that's kind of important in this case here is the window capture. And so what window capture allows you to do is to capture a specific window. So whether you want to capture just a browser or like a file window. Um, let me actually, let me demonstrate kind of what we have here. I'm, I, we're not going to keep this, don't follow along. But I can say grab, um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. apparently I have, no, it's not open. Um, I can say grab the browser file. There we go. So I have the window where I have the, the um, my, my Explorer Navigator window. I have this open here. I can grab that window and just that window. So you're not seeing the desktop around or anything else there. I can do the same thing as if I had, um, let me open up. Actually, I could grab uh, my PDF file. Where is, is it not here? Oh, it's not going to let me grab the PDF file. So, I, um, but I could have, say, like Microsoft, uh, my Microsoft Word. I could grab just Microsoft Word on there too if I wanted to. So the window capture allows you to grab a specific window, and not everything else around. Sometimes uh, it doesn't exactly match things all that well. Uh, we're going to actually remove that because we don't want that on there. Uh, what we're going to do for the course of this class and what I'm doing right now is we're just going to do a display capture. Oh, and I said those four. The other thing here is this video capture device. So the video capture device is basically anything that's bringing video into your computer. So whether it's going to be a webcam or camera. So if you wanted to have the face cam, like my lovely face cam I have here, uh, that's a video capture device. So the webcam that's built into your laptop, or if you have a separate webcam, you would choose that and then you would choose the cam. It would have a list of the cameras that are available and it would put that in there. Um, if you're streaming from a like a video game console, like a um, an Xbox or a PlayStation or an, uh, like a Nintendo Switch, something like that, uh, you need to have what's known as a capture device on your computer. I mentioned when I was talking about the equipment earlier, I was talking about capture devices at that point. Um, and what they would do is you would plug the the console into the capture device, and then that would send the video into the computer, and that video would you would get from this video capture device. Uh, this is a little bit outside of what I'm going to be showing here in the class, but just know that depending on what you want to be broadcasting, you might have to use these different type of um, of captures. And one of the things that I've done that's it's useful is I've, um, uh, in my main scene that I use, in fact, actually, let me show you. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be a little bit disorienting here because you're going to see all this stuff on here. Let me change here to this. Uh, so this is this is this is my this is my setup for what I'm streaming here to YouTube, and you can see actually I have display capture, game capture, window capture, and then like webcam here. I have all those different captures showing up uh, in the scene, so they're in the scene. But you can see that I actually have I have a bunch of them turned off or muted. 
Uh, and the reason for that there, I'm going to go back to this uh, so it's le less distracting, uh, is that I can then easily change between the different captures that are that I need when I need them. So if I was just showing a window, I can set up the window display and just show that. Um, but I do find for the course of this class where I'm hopping between different windows, like I'm, I'm showing you things in Firefox or I'm, and I'm showing you things uh, like I'm hopping over to the PDF and showing you this here. Those different, uh, being able to show you the whole screen that I'm looking at here just ends up being a little bit easier doing the display capture. So I'm going to go back here and what we're going to do is we're going to add in our display capture. So I'm going to hit plus, we're going to come up to the display capture. And we are going to call this, actually, we're just going to call it Display Capture. It's, it's already a useful name. Uh, you could call it, if you have like multiple monitors, you could call it Monitor 1 or Main Monitor, and then you could have a display that captures Monitor 2. Um, you can name it whatever you want. I could, I could name this thing Fido if I wanted to, just as long as I remember that Fido is my Display Capture. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. And um, now it's grabbed the window. And because because it's showing the screen that I have the, um, okay, so now we're actually, okay, so we have the properties window here, and I'm able to choose which display it's showing. Um, my computer, I actually happen to have, uh, actually, it's only allowing me two displays. Wait, why is it only allowing me two displays? That's sad. Um, I actually have three displays, but it's not allowing me to show them all. Um, but um, so it's, it's capturing the screen that you're seeing here and you're getting this weird uh, infinite effect because it's previewing, showing you the screen, which is then showing you the screen kind of going all the way back. So it's a little disorienting. Um, but uh, so now it's, it's just capturing everything in the screen here. And because this is 1920 by 1080, I'm going to hit OK. It fills up the whole space which means that we're not seeing our overlay border that we had. We're not seeing our background color that we have. We're actually not going to see the background color. But what I want to do now is I want to resize this so that it fits inside of my border. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this handle up here in the top left corner, and I'm going to drag it down until it kind of connects into the inside of my border there. And I'm going to grab this other handle. I'm going to resize this here until it fills up. And now you can see I now have, uh, I have my overlay border going around and then I have my little display inside the overlay border and now what I'm going to do is I'm once again I'm going to lock uh, the display capture so it can't get moved or resized but you can see now now I have my display going on in here and then a nice border around the whole thing so we have added in the, the background, the border overlay, and the display. I'm going to actually give about two to three minutes for anybody who's following along to kind of catch up. Let's say two minutes. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go in and add the live background. Uh, so add source, choose color source, uh, name it, live background, then choose the color, and make sure that's the full size of your background there. Add the border overlay, so this will be add image, uh, give it a name, and then uh, you'll go to Browse, Browse to where the, the border file is that uh, I provided to you in the demo files. Uh, and then what happens is that will be smaller, so you want to resize that to fit the whole screen. Cancel, let me get rid of that. Um, yes, I want to remove image. And then add in the display capture, so add display capture and then use your monitor and again that's going to fill up the whole space that you have so then resize it so it fits inside the border so take about two minutes and catch up if you have questions please ask me in the chat and i will describe or answer any questions and it doesn't have to be questions about this specific skill right now this will be it could be questions about um, anything i've talked to up to this point or questions if you're, you're thinking ahead kind of what you have
All right, so I don't see any questions. I hope people are staying caught up or following along. Uh, somehow, this seems transitions. Somehow I, oh, you know what? Because I had to open it up again. View docs lock. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to, uh, we're going to add some text to this here. So now we have, I mean, we have our display. And because this is a little distracting, um, having this infinite display going on there and such, I'm just going to hide it right now, just so that we're not seeing it. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some text to uh, the top and bottom on here. And there are two different ways that you can add text to, um, uh, to your scene. Uh, and there's, there's reasons why you want to use both ways. So the first way is that we can just put the text. We can make it what's it's pretty much going to be static text, something that you'll put on that you don't really want to change all that often. So something you say maybe like a title or a URL. So like if you have, say, your YouTube channel, uh, you can go and put uh, like a text that say your, your YouTube channel and put that like near your face cam or wherever on there so that when people come and see your stream, they can see that address there and they know where else to go find you. Something like a Twitter handle or your Facebook profile, depending on how you want to kind of promote or share this kind of information. Something like that does not change very often. And in most cases, you're going to put it into place on your overlay and you're not going to really move it. So that's something that's going to be largely static. And so we can create like static text that we just kind of place and plant and kind of just kind of lock into place. So for the course of this year, what we're going to do for this class is we're going to actually put in like a title for this year. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do add a new source and I'm going to come up down here to text. Uh, don't root. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it might say something different than GDI plus. All that's important is right here. It says text. Uh, this just basically means that it's tying into like a Windows um, uh, Windows software for dealing with text. So I'm going to hit text, and what we're going to do here is I'm going to call it top title because that's where it's going to be. It's going to be a title up here at the top of our screen. I'm going to hit OK. And now what happens is, is now I have, this is the preview of what the text is going to look like. I can type in the text here. I'm going to type in Ferguson Library Demonstration. Um, and you can see right now, right now it's an Arial font. Um, I'm not going to go in and change the font, but if I go here, select font, you can change all the different fonts that you have on your computer. You can change the size. Uh, you can do the bold italics underline here. So you have, you have your, your font transformations all available in there. You'll also notice sometimes it's a little hard to see that there's actually a, I actually didn't notice this until I was looking up some stuff earlier today, that there's actually a scroll uh, over here. Uh, and so come down, there's different things you can do, like change the color. In this case, we're not going to really change it. We're going to leave it as white. Uh, but if you wanted to have a different color text, you can come down here and you can do select color. And we get our same color selection that we saw when we were doing our background color before. You can change that there. Um, opacity is how transparent it is. So you can see as, as I move this down, as I make the opacity less, you can now see, you can see actually the edge between the background and the frame. Uh, through the text. So if you wanted to have text show up, but you want to be able to see what's behind it, you can make it more or less transit. Uh, uh, you can make it more or less transparent. Uh, you could do a background color if you wanted to. Uh, and the background opacity. Uh, things like alignment. Do I want this here to be centered? We're going to center it into our box there. Is it centered up at the top or bottom? Uh, if I wanted to, I could make it vertical text so it runs up and down the side. So you have those kind of different kind of transformations that you can do as well too. Transform here, I can make it all uppercase. I can make it all lowercase or I can do start case, which is what I had before. Um, also known as camel case um, or title case. But for right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to just do basic Arial. I'm not going to change any other settings. I'm going to put in Ferguson Library Demonstration. I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll notice when I put this in, because of the size of the font, it is much bigger than my whole window. It actually runs off. I'm only able to get Ferguson Library on here. Um, so I could use my handles to resize it, but there's a couple other different tools that uh, OBS offers to kind of help make things line up and to resize things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I have my right click menu with a whole bunch of different things in here. But what's important to me right now is I want to come down to transform. And so there's a bunch of different kind of transform things. I highly recommend getting in, playing around, seeing what all these kind of things do. Uh, we really don't have the time in the class today to kind of go over it there. 
But the one that we want to kind of take, uh, kind of important to work with here, such as we want to either do fit to screen or stretch to screen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do stretch to screen because it's kind of a funny thing that happens when I do this here. What it does is it resizes the bounding box. The bounding box is this red box with the handles, so that it fits within the size of my screen. So this is you could do this with um, actually any of your sources, any of your visual sources, whether they're images, whether there's displays, whether they're video, um, whatever you do, you can actually like right click, if I go um, and say, let's actually, let's make this disappear and lock my, uh, my border overlay Whoop. on the shared such. So click on this, right click, I can transform. I can do the same thing on here too. So I can like center it. I can do all these different, I can flip it. I can do all these different things. So you can make things fit into the screen uh, really easy with just a couple of clicks. And then once it's once it's uh, sized there, it's easy to like resize it. So like before when I had put this here, it was running way off onto the side and it would have been a little bit difficult to resize and move it into place where I want to do. Now I see the whole thing and let me unlock it. And now I can actually resize it to the size that I want. And in this case, what I want to do is actually, I'm going to make this actually the same width as my display up here. So that just kind of nicely fits right up there on the top. Ferguson Library demonstration. Now, because this is my title for that I'm going to have on this whole thing, it's not something that's going to change all that often. So I can actually happily go in and lock it so that now it can't be moved, can't be resized. Um, and it's not something that I'm going to change all that often. If I did want to change it in the future, I can actually just right click. I can go down to properties and I can change the text. So it's, it's not difficult or impossible to change the text once it's there. Um, it's just not as convenient. And usually you just want a kind of nice static text for something that doesn't really change all that often. Now, the other type of way of adding text is by having text in a text file. I'm using the word text a lot there, but, um, and by a text file, I mean something that you can open up in like Notepad. Um, and so I'm gonna go here, and I have created a, in, in your demo files, uh, there is a file that says OBS sample text file.txt. If I open this up, uh, you can see, I'm just gonna make this say, this is sample text. Uh, inside this text box and I can type however much text I want to put into here um, and save this as my my text file now what happened uh, what I can do is I can take the text that's inside this text file and put it into my scene here now why would I want to do that why would I want to pull it from a text file instead of say typing it into the other box well the nice thing is is that if I'm pulling the information from a text file I can then change the text in that text file anytime I want, and it will automatically change in my in my scene, in my broadcast. Um, and it will happen live. It doesn't have to refresh or change. As soon as I save the file, it will update here. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to demonstrate that when I, here. But the neat thing about that is, is that so you can do things like you can put some information into a text box or into a text file, save it, sh show it in your, your scene here, and that at some point down the road, you may need to change that text. You can just open up the text, and if and if it's not on the screen, your, your viewers won't see it. You can change that information, and then it'll automatically update here. Um, so that's where like you might want to do something, say like the window capture or the game capture, and then you're seeing that off in another window. They're not seeing it on the screen. So how does this work? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to come back down to text, just like I did before. It's the same setup there. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this, um, uh, we're going to call it update text, because this is something that we will update and change. And I'm going to hit OK. And again, I get my same properties that I had before. And you'll notice, like, right underneath the, um, the font, to say where's the font name, there's this little checkbox that says read from file. So I'm going to click on read from file and you can see all of a sudden now I have a whole bunch of like I actually have a, a new instead of instead of a box here where I can type in the text that will be visible I get a browse uh, I get a file selection thing here with my browse button so what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse and I'm going to browse to the uh, the text file that's in the demo files so the OBS sample text file.txt I'm going to hit OK and now you can see this is sample text. It actually shows the text that was entered here. This is sample text exclamation point. Um, so it's actually showing the text that is in that text file. Once again, I can go and change the color. I can do all the different things that I did with the other text before. 
So I'm just going to hit OK. Now you can see this is also a little bit larger than my my thing here. My but I can I can resize this that I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. I'm going to bring it down here to the bottom. Make sure it's the same size. Kind of center it. There we go. So now we have Ferguson Library, and then we have the sample text down here. Now, why, why, what is this different now that this is from the text file? So let me show you. If I come over here and go to the text file, and I'm going to say, right originally it said this is sample text. Now I'm going to say is, this is different text, exclamation point. And I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to go back to here, and now you can see this here automatically changed. I didn't have to change it here. In fact, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this here so we can kind of, let's actually, let's resize this so you can actually see. Um, okay, so now this is even more different. Text, exclamation point. So I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to save it. So I'm going to hit Control S to save it. And now you can see this automatically updated and changed. So what I could do now is I could say move this off to another screen. And now I could say put something like I, well, let me, I'm, going to, I'm typing. And I'm going to save. And now you can see now it shows up here and you can now see I am changing the text in a place you cannot see. So I was able to change and update the text without you being able to see it on the screen here and then it showed up on the broadcast. So that's why that's where the text file is useful and and really creative people who have built stuff for OBS have used that significantly to their advantage. So you can do things like there's ways that you can like build counters that will automatically update um, a text file. And then because it updates the text file, it will update the view that's on your screen. So things like um, like a death counter. If you're playing a video game where you say you may die a lot and you want to keep track of how many times your character dies, uh, you can. There, there's a whole setup where you can actually use a text file to keep track of that death counter. And then every time you die, you, you hit a, you, there's like a, you can do a combination or something that then updates the text file that then updates what it shows up on the screen. Uh, people have done things like... Um, if they're playing music, um, it will automatically pull the metadata from music. So like things like song title and the um, and the artist, put it into the text file. So then it shows up onto the stream there. So that's where the, this update with the text file is really useful. Is that whatever is in there and gets updated and saved, changes and shows up in the demonstration there. Whereas my Ferguson library demonstration, in order to change this, I have to do it right in here in OBS. Um, whereas this here allows me to do a lot of other things in an outside software. So um, now that we have, I'm going to close this. So it's not anyway. So now we have we have we have done a bunch of different. And I'm going to actually go visual. So now we have our our scene, our visual parts of our scene put together here. Uh, I have a display that's being shown. I have a border overlay around. I have some text that gives some information on there. Uh, but uh, right now there's no audio coming in. You can see my audio mixer down here is empty. There's nothing, uh, it's not getting any audio there. So we do need to add some audio sources. Uh, to, so sources include, as I remember, sources include images, video, text, and audio. Uh, so the sound that comes through. So whether it's something coming from the microphone or the sound being played by the computer. And so that's usually kind of the two main audio sources that you want to have, that you want to add to your stream. You want to add in uh, a microphone if you're going to be broadcasting uh, with your voice and adding, uh, and adding to kind of a microphone in there. And then also the sound from the computer. So if you're playing a game or you're, you're doing something like a video or something, there's sound effects playing, you want to be able to pull the sound from the computer as well too. So let's go in and let's add in those sources. So we're going to come down to... Oh, and OBS just crashed on me again. It doesn't like again. It doesn't like those multiple instances. Launch anyway, and bring it back down here. Oh, okay. So it decided that was where it was going to save that. Got it. Okay. Hold on. Just getting this. Nope. Smaller. Smaller. There we go. 
There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. I think we're back to where we were before. Okay. And lock that. And put this on. So now we're seeing everything again. Okay. Back. Uh, sorry for that. Um, so now we need to add some audio sources. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to click Add. And the first thing that we're going to want to add is... Okay. Uh, is we want to add the microphone. Uh, so we want to add uh, the microphone to the display here. So um, before we talked about the four different like video capture things, uh, four different video capture sources, there are also two different audio capture sources. So the first one is audio import capture. And so this is audio coming into the computer, i.e. a microphone. So a microphone's capturing it, turning a digital signal and sending it into the computer. The audio output capture is basically your computer's output, so your speaker. So you think about microphone and speakers. Um, you need those two different parts to kind of get the full audit, audit, the, the full audio environment. So we're going to do an audio input capture, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to call this microphone because that's what we're adding in. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now I'm able to go in and it'll actually ask for device. Uh, when you're, if you're, unless you're again really comfortable, or you have a bunch of different devices and you want to kind of really specific th specifically set things up, you can probably leave this for default. Especially if you're first time. If you're working on like a laptop, it's going to automatically grab the microphone that's built into the computer. Uh, you can just do default. Otherwise, you can open up and you can kind of see the different kind of sound capture devices in there. Uh, we're just going to leave it as default, and I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see microphones added over here to the sources. It's also over here in the audio mixer, and it's actually showing my voice. This is now actually live capturing the microphone that I'm speaking into, uh, and you can kind of see how it's capturing the wave uh, from my microphone on there. Uh, the audio mixer is a really great way to kind of help fine tune your audio as you're going. Uh, you have the um, uh, the meter here that shows how loud you are, how loud the different audio things are in relation to each other, as well as how loud it's going. You can see I'm kind of hitting a lot into yellow on here. So what I can do down here is I can actually change the volume so that say I'm going kind of consistently when I'm at my point hitting the greens because if you get too high if you start getting into the reds uh, it's what they call peaking and so what happens is, is that you start hitting kind of the top range that the microphone and the speakers can hit and that's where you'll get things like distortion and crackles and pops. So generally you want to kind of leave uh, your audio kind of try to keep it into the green as much as possible. You can still see I'm still kind of hitting up into yellow, um, especially on kind of the plosives, like the P sounds. Um, and that's even with a, a, a kind of a filter in place on here. But yeah, so you can adjust kind of the volume. And if I say have another audio source that shows up and you're like, okay, so we're going to suppose we put the desktop audio and the desktop audio ends up being louder than my microphone, I can adjust the two volumes here based on which one I want to have be louder. Like if I want if I want the audio to be kind of really out there and kind of pushing everything there, like there's music playing or it's like a really kind of epic scene in like whatever I'm doing, um, I could have that, that desktop audio playing louder. Or if I wanted to have my voice be the, um, kind of be the overpowering sound that you hear the other audio underneath, but I want you, my voice to be the clearest. I can make sure that my, my voice, my microphone is louder. So let's say let's like go in and add the other audio source and kind of see how it looks in the audio mixer here. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go to add again and I'm going to choose audio output capture. So now I have my input. I have my microphone coming in. So now I need the other part. I need the output going out. So I'm going to hit output. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this, I think, just desktop, computer audio. Computer audio. And again, descriptive names are very useful. Um, because it again makes sense. If I just have, I mean, you can see over here in my display things, I have two text things showing up in here now. I have the update text and top title. And so by even just looking at the names, I know exactly what they're referring to. I have my top title, I have my update text. I, normally I could say it's called this bottom text, um, but it's we're, we're doing showing the update thing with text, that's why it's called there. But you can see by having a descriptive name, it just makes things easier and more organized to work with. So I'm gonna hit okay on here, computer audio. I'm going to leave this at default, just like before. Hit OK. And now you can see actually now is I have computer audio over here and microphone. So there's my sources. And the computer audio is now shown up here in the audio mixer. Now we're not getting any computer audio right now because my computer is not sending out any sound. 
Um, it's just me speaking in. But if I say do something like say turn on uh, the music I had playing earlier, and so you know you can okay, hold on. I'm gonna bring this way down. <laughs> this is the example of what I was talking about. There is is that the um, uh, the the audio and such was actually louder than my microphone was going on. Uh, so now I have the audio playing. If I get this up a little bit louder, you can actually see the the wave, the meter kind of playing with the audio. I'm gonna stop it now so it's less distracting. But you can see now I'm getting the audio playing from the computer and I can see the meter and you can see actually I did it live bringing the d computer audio down below my microphone audio so that my microphone would be whatever you're hearing from my microphone my speaking would be louder than what the computer is playing. So this is one of the things when you first kind of live stream uh, when you're first getting set up that you're going to really want to get in and kind of play around with. Um, as I mentioned at the very start, is that you can you can record just as easily with um, with OBS as stream. So what I would always recommend is go in, get the get your scene set up on here, get get the the game or the window showing up on there, get your audio, get your microphone set up, your desktop audio, get all of those set up and working. And then go and do start recording and say, speak a few things. Go and record 15, 20 seconds. Say things. Have audio playing. Um, have music playing while you're speaking. So then you can kind of get a sense of where those levels are. So then you go back and play that recording. And then you're able to say, okay, my microphone needs to be a little bit louder. The desktop audio needs to be a little bit quieter. Oh, wait, it's not grabbing that window the way that I wanted it to. So you're able to check all of that stuff locally on your computer before you start broadcasting it out live. So I, it's a, I'm always constantly making and deleting like 10, 15 second videos as I continue kind of adjusting. I'm, I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I'm still always, I'm learning new things. I'm always changing, adjusting things, uh, figuring out a new way to kind of do something. Uh, but yeah, so doing those like little test rec records and kind of seeing how it goes before I actually go uh, live. The nice thing about OBS is though, is that once you get things set up, um, it, it, it stays in place really well. So usually once you, the longest thing is getting that initial setup and getting everything working the way that you want it to. And then once you have it, uh, you're able to start it up and get going right away. Okay, so we have about 20 minutes left of the class. Um, and I have talked about a lot of different other things here. So uh, I wanna actually show kind of the different scenes, like what happens with like the different scenes that we have. Um, Cause we, we've talked about all the different sources. So you can see now, going back to my original definitions that I started off with the class, is that when you have a scene, it's made up of multiple sources. And you can see this scene here, our most complex one that we're making, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sources. You can have a lot of more sources available in there. I mean, I have, um, I've had ones that have had uh, 10 or 11 different sources uh, in there because uh, that's the, um, that's just how complex I'm making things or what I'm trying to show up on the uh, on the screen there. But you can also make much simpler uh, uh, scenes. Uh, and that's what we're going to kind of do for kind of right now until the end of the class here. So we're going to go in and instead of adding the plus for the sources there, I'm going to come over to the scene and I'm going to click the plus over here. And I'm going to add a scene and we're going to call this one here uh, intro scene. I'm just going to call it intro. I'm going to hit OK. And so now you can see I have now live and intro listed over here. There's no sources. I'm back to my black window that I had before. Uh, nothing in the audio mixer. And so what we're going to do is, is this is going to be the scene that if we were going to be streaming, this is what we're going to present first that goes out there. Um, a good example of that there is uh, what I use here. Let me just demonstrate quickly on the screen here. That automatically mutes when I go to the engine, but it shows this screen here when the stream is starting off so that you as a viewer, when you came in, you knew that, okay, it's going to be starting soon. Thank you for your patience. Here's some information before we get started that you might want to go check out. Uh, so that's kind of what that intro scene is kind of really meant for. It's kind of to say, hey, it's working. I know it's there. I'll be with you in just a second. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, we've created it there, we're going to add in, we're just going to add in a couple different sources on this one here. We're going to go in, I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to add in an image, because I want to put an image background. So instead of doing a color background, like I did with the other one, I'm going to put an image here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in, okay, so 
Remember before when I first was starting off and we added in the color source background? And I was talking about the, there was the create new and then there was add existing. Now you can see now I actually have something down here in add existing. I have the border overlay because it's recognizing that that's another image that I've added into another scene. So what I can do is, is that because I've configured that border overlay, I could actually add that border overlay back into here so that and the thing is it'll have the same properties. It'll be the same size. It will be everything. So if I switch between the different scenes, it'll keep that image the same between both of those there. Uh, but in this case, we're actually just going to create something new. We're going to call this intro background. Background. Uh, intro space background. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm back to my properties for this year. I'm going to browse. And where I'm going to select is I'm going to go back to the demo files. And I'm going to choose the intro background image here that I have in the demo files. Hit open and then hit OK. And now you can see it's it's here. It actually doesn't quite. Oh, the socket's got me thirsty. It doesn't quite fit into my space here because it's actually too narrow. But this is remember the transform that we use on the the um, the text. I can right click on here. I can come down to transform, and I can come down to stretch the screen. Now, normally I don't want to do this with an image because when you stretch something, it's going to it's going to look weird. Uh, this one actually doesn't look that weird after it gets stretched, so it works. Um, something I could do if I wanted to um, is I could have actually what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get it back to. I undo. OK, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Um, let me just show you. Let me just show you another thing that you could do instead of stretching. So if it's an image that if I do that stretch the screen, it ends up stretching it. Um, you can have the image. Uh, it doesn't. It can actually fall outside of your display area as well too. And so what do I mean by that? Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, intro background. Okay. So the thing about this one here is is that it's it's wider than it is uh, tall. Um, but if I want this, if it is, I can actually go in and I can actually like resize this here. So it gets the right height. And you can see by the striped line over here, this is the, it's showing me what's outside of the image. And so now I can actually say move this over so maybe it gets centered. It's not going to actually lock on centering, but that's okay. And I can get, say, the part of the image that I want to have visible as my background. Uh, now it's not stretched. It's the same aspect ratio. It's the same height and width ratio that it was before. Um, I'm just cutting off or cropping off kind of a section there. So on when when this is being broadcast, all you're seeing is this part. You're not seeing the parts that were cut off onto the sides there. Um, so that's the other. So those are the two different ways you can either stretch it um, or you can kind of resize it and, and just accept that things might get kind of cut out on the outside there. Uh, the other thing you could do is that I know this is a 1920 by 1080 sized canvas is I could have gone in and I could have, say, cropped this photo to 9, 1920 by 1080, gotten this view here, and just saved it so I don't have that part getting cut off on in there. So you can create the image to the specific size that you want. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do. There's a lot of flexibility. So we're going to add a background, and then we're just going to add a um, just a text thing on here. Um, and you can see, once I add it, I can actually add in, I have my, I have my, my text from my other views if I wanted to. They're right here. So I could go grab the, the, the text from the other scenes and use that same text if I wanted to. So if I wanted to actually, if I wanted to add my top title, I can put that up there. And we can um, fit the screen. There we go. And if I wanted to, I could fit this right actually. Let's see. Can we? There we go. Um, if I wanted to have this, I could have this sitting right up here at the top, just like I did um, before. Um, and then I can say put in some new text again. And we're just going to call this uh, stream starting. Hit OK. And I'm going to say the stream is starting soon. And yep, let's change the color of this one here. Let's go and make this a bright pink. Yeah, that will stand up nicely against these mountains here. Okay, and then I just then resize this to kind of fit. Ooh, I did not want to do. God, I flipped it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I 
you can do a lot of good, and then I can put that there, and there we go. So there's the stream is starting soon. So now I have my intro scene. Uh, and then we're going to do one more. Actually, this just needs to be... Um, okay, so there we go. And now I'm going to create one more scene. So this is our very basic kind of um, uh, intro scene. This is what we'll be playing before everything kind of starts off. And I'm going to create one more here. Uh, I'm going to create another scene, and we're going to call this Be Right Back. Or BRB, or however you want to call it. Hit OK. And once again, I'm blank and have no sources. I'm going to go in, and just like before, I'm going to add in an image. And you can see now, if I wanted to, I could pull in my, my background image that I had for my intro. But I'm going to create a new interest. We're going to call this BRB Background. Hit OK. Browse. Choose to be right back. Background image. And hit OK. And now you can see this one here is also just a little bit too big. Uh, we're just going to stretch this one to screen this time. There we go. So now it nicely fits on there. Uh, and then we're just going to put in some text. Again, text. Uh, be right back. Text. Hit OK. We will be right back, folks. And you know what? I want to make this, uh, let's make this kind of browny color. Yeah, that, that actually looks pretty good, I guess, there. Um, and then we're just going to transform, and we're going to fit this one to screen. There we go. So we'll be right back. So now, um, when I'm when I'm streaming, is I would come in and I can change between the stream the scenes really quickly by just clicking on the scenes over here. So if I when the stream is starting, I'm going to have this screen up here, and so this will be me kind of okay. Everything I've I've gotten the settings going. It's going out to the platform, and when somebody tunes in, this is what they're going to see at the start until I'm ready to go live. In that case, and you can see I haven't added any audio into these here, so there's no audio. Um, added into here, so there's, it's just going to be silent. If I wanted to, I could go in and um, and do like what I do with my my stream here on YouTube, is I have my desktop audio coming in on the start screen, and I have music playing. So I could do, I could go in and add the desktop audio. Um, go in audio output capture, and it's it. I can come down here and just do add computer audio. Here's that add existing. Okay, and so now the computer audio is playing. So if I started playing uh, music again it will now play along with this here. Um, so those are different kind of things that I can do on there. And then, so I'm going through and I'm ready to go live. It's like, okay, folks, we're ready to go. I can then click over to live. And by doing that there, now you're seeing what I'm, what I'm showing on the screen there. If my face cam, you're seeing my face cam on there. It's picking up my microphone. So now you're actually hearing what I'm saying uh, and doing everything that I need to do. Um, and so then I go through and do my stream. I'm showing off how to use Microsoft Word, using Microsoft Excel. I'm playing my game. Do, 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 do. Um, and then I, then all of a sudden, maybe there's a knock at the door, or I need to go use the restroom. I need, there's some, there's some reason why I need to get up from my chair, get away from the camera for, for whatever reason. Uh, so what I can do then is I can come over here and just click be right back. And I can go back to there and such. And so now what this is telling people, it's like, okay, and if I wanted to, I could go in and add the desktop audio and have music playing here so it's not just silent, but it'll also be, it's like, okay, the stream is still going on, it's still active, we're just going to be right back, so just be a little bit patient. So you can see I can ease, and then when I come back, I can change right back to my live uh, scene here and go back to streaming like I did before. So that's why, and then so uh, all of these here are now saved in the scene collection. So now what happens is I can then change between different scene collections based on the different things that I'm doing in OBS um, and have everything kind of set up and ready for the next time. So like if I'm coming in, I can jump over to library instruction when I'm teaching my next class and it's all set up and ready for me to go to teach the next class, which happens to be uh, basic Microsoft Word next Tuesday, same time as this, seven to nine. Uh, if you want to learn basic Microsoft Word, come join me right here on the YouTube channel um because i will be doing some basic work this is actually the course that um and unfortunately got postponed earlier this month because i lost internet from the tropical storm uh yeah i didn't have, I didn't have internet 
so, uh, what else is there for me to cover? Okay, so the, uh, I have about 10 minutes left. So I, there's just a couple more things that I just want to kind of go over. The first thing, uh, kind of make things, so you saw me changing scenes uh, here between, um, by clicking between the different scenes. So there is some more capabilities built into uh, OBS for changing between different scenes. The first one, and the mo probably the most useful one that I highly recommend if you're getting into streaming, and I'm just actually, hold on, I'm just going to, hide this <laughs> and hide this just so it's a little bit less distracting all the stuff going on, on the screen as I'm talking here um, is hotkeys so OBS has the capability of setting up like keyboard commands to do a lot of common tasks uh, and I highly recommend when you're when you're getting set up and you're, you're you're getting ready to kind of do all of this here that you figure out some hotkeys to kind of and the key about hotkeys is sitting there thinking about how you're going to use your OBS how are you going to change between different scenes and what kind of actions will you need to have so let's go into settings and let me just show you kind of the variety of hotkeys so if we go into settings right over here on the left menu bar is a hotkeys section. And I kind of went over, I showed a little bit of this before when I was kind of giving the tour of the interface of OBS. So there's things like start streaming, start recording, stop on there. Uh, there are things like uh, muting the microphone. Um, uh, yeah, so computer audio, microphone down here. I could set up a keyboard shortcut to mute things, uh, to mute. So if you're say using the built-in uh, microphone on your laptop, they're really, uh, I think there, there's actually probably a function, like an FN key and maybe like one of the numbers or the uh, the, um, the F keys above your keyboard. Uh, you hit that there and hit FN and you hit that, that function key, it will mute your microphone. But sometimes that can kind of be difficult to search for. So if I wanted to, I could put in, say, if I put in Control M. Now when I hit Control M, I hit OK, on here, I hit Control M. It will mute my microphone, so that if, say, there's something I need to talk about, like say somebody comes into the room and I need to talk to them, and I don't want you, the viewers, to hear them, uh, I can mute the microphone, and then I can do Control M also to say unmute the microphone. So by hitting Control M, uh, so now that they're able to. Uh, so hitting one will then mute or unmute it there. I can mute the computer audio. So look, if I have music playing, I want to end it there and such, I can hit, uh, say, control N to, uh, so let's actually just, no, there we go. Get rid of it, so I don't want these. Um, but I can use the keyboard shortcuts to do certain things. Uh, you'll notice uh, there is so that's that's the audio pieces down there. Uh, we also you can also see I have sections here for each of the different scenes that I've made, and they're ordered alphabetically. So there's my be right back scene that I created. Here's my intro scene. Here's my live scene. If I have 15 different scenes over here, I will have 15 different sections on here, and each of them will actually have. Um, so you can see, be right back only has a few different. Uh, places there because I only have a few sources in there so I have show or hide the source show or hide the source and then switch to the scene intro because I've added in computer audio I have a few more um, different uh, elements on there live because I have the most amount of elements in there it's even longer but you can create keyboard shortcuts to show or hide um, all the different elements so if I go and look at so I could if I if I didn't want to see the update text or the top title I can do a keyboard shortcut to get rid of it and hide it uh, but the keyboard shortcuts that I usually find useful to use, um, first of all, if, if you don't have any other functionality, is, is the mute. The microphone mute is very important. So set up your, mic your mute, set up your audio mute, and then also set up the switch to scene. So for example, I can do uh, my, my intro, which is my first scene. I'm going to do control shift one. So I hold down the control on my keyboard, I hold down shift on my keyboard, and then I hit one. And so that enters in control shift one here. Uh, for be right back, we're going to do Control Shift two, and for live, we're going to do Control Shift three. And so by doing Control Shift, it's it's something that usually like a game or software will not use those there. So I'm not going to actually do something in whatever program, um, and it's kind of specific for this purpose here. So now if I hit OK, and now I'm going to hit Control Shift one, you'll notice now it will change right here back to my live screen. 
Uh, two takes me to be right back. I actually had that wrong. Three will now take me to my live demonstration screen. So by using my keyboards, I'm able, instead of having to come over and click the scenes over here, I'm able to easily um, hop between my scenes by using my keyboard and my keyboard controls. Sorry, my nose is just so itchy. I realized this entire night I've been sitting here scratch, scratch, scratch. Um, I'm going to see if I can stop for, until uh, we, until we finish. Um, the other uh, capability, the other features that OBS has built in for changing between different scenes is what's called studio mode. And so studio mode is really nifty. Um, if I click studio mode over here on the controls, I, it changes to this two screen uh, demonstration here. And what it is is that over here on the right is I have my live view. This is what you're seeing right, this is what you're broadcasting out. This is what you're seeing uh, as, I, um, uh, as I'm broadcasting or streaming. Over here is a preview. And in the preview, I can add things, I can make changes, I can change it over to the intro scene if I wanted to. Um, so now what happens is, and then I can then set up, I can then say, okay, transition. So what it'll do then is it'll change this to the live, but I can make sure that this is looking the way that I want it to look before it goes live. Uh, so it's actually it's a really clever, and you can see, there we go. So now I was able to switch through, and now the, back over here, I preview back to my live. So now we're able to kind of quickly go back if we need to. So um, a good example is, let's go to live, and you know what, let's, um, let's change where this text is. So you can see I'm moving this text. So I don't, I didn't like this text where it was before. So I'm putting it into a different place. The live view over here, you're still seeing the text in the original place. So now I click transition and now all of a sudden now the text gets moved to another place and you can do different transitions. So right now it's set as a cut transition, which means that it just, um, it just fades from one to another. Um, I could do a fade to black if I wanted to. So if I do something like this and you know, let's put you back down here and transition. Oh, it didn't actually do it that time. Um, but yeah, so there's different ways you can do kind of different transitions. Um, uh, but the studio mode allows you to kind of make changes and see what they are uh, while not affecting your live view at the time. Uh, this is something that you can, I, I, me as personal as a solo streamer where it's just me and I don't have a, like any other support or anybody else kind of working with me on the air and such, um, I don't tend to use this a lot. Um, I tend to rely things on hotkeys to kind of do some changing and kind of keep things as simple as possible. Um, but on some of the larger operations, they actually have somebody who might be sitting there operating the computer and that you can do things like have different cameras set up. So um, I was talking before about like the video input capture that you add in like the webcam. You could have two or three different webcams connected to the computer and have them all feed into here. So the idea of saying maybe doing an interview with somebody and you have a camera on the face of the interviewer and a camera on the face of the interviewee and then you have a producer sitting there, they can swap live between which camera is being shown out to the broadcast or even have like a scene set up that shows them both. Um, these different kind of things. This is something that comes from the media world and how things like TV shows and news broadcasts are, are, are developed. So that is studio mode. Um, I am just about out of time. There is one more thing I just really kind of want to cover quickly is um, we've talked about setting everything up here and making the look and, and I talked a little bit about recording. But I also just want to talk about the streaming and the streaming platform. So now how do you get what's here in OBS on your computer out to the internet, out to the streaming platform of your choice. And you do that by, uh, we come here to the settings and we come here, the second option down is stream. And so in stream here, you choose which service you want to stream to. So I open this up, there are the, there are so, like the four major ones out there. Like there's Twitch, there's YouTube, there's Facebook Live, Twitter, Periscope, those kind of, there's all those different kind of platforms on there. So you need, you need to choose the platform that you want to go to. So before you start streaming, go choose the platform that you want to go to. Do you want to do on Twitch? Do you want to do YouTube? Do you want to do Facebook? Um, or is, are you going to be streaming to something else? There's a huge list. There's actually a lot more that's on there. So you, you choose where you want to stream and then kind of go look at kind of what the requirements are. So something like say YouTube. If you want to stream to YouTube, you actually have to go in and you have to ver your account has to be verified. 
that's an important thing. Google has to verify your account. And then once it's verified, it takes 24 hours for them to finally approve you. So you can't just like, if you wanted to like in an afternoon, you get everything set up like, okay, I'm gonna stream tonight. And you go to YouTube, you're gonna have to wait 24 hours. So kind of plan ahead on these kind of things. Um, once you're once you're configured on there so something like twitch twitch actually does not have that that waiting period you can set up your account and you could go in and start streaming almost immediately um something like um mixer which used to be around which is microsoft streaming platform they were also a 24-hour wait in fact there was a time i had an account on mixer i didn't use it for a while and when i went to go back to use it i had to wait that 24 hours even if i had even since i had already streamed on it before um because i'm not at all. I don't get any of the privileges that some of the big streamers out there get. Um, so again, research the platform that you're looking for. Research kind of like what technology it's looking for, or not what technology, but like what the setup it's looking for, what resolutions you can stream at. Some of them might be just limited to 720p, so you can't really send the 1080p on there, um, different resolutions video on there. Um, once you've set up your account and chosen your platform and set up your account there, you have to get what's known as the stream key. So the stream key, I am not going to show you the stream key on here. That is actually one of the big security no-nos when it comes to streaming is don't let anybody, never show your stream key on stream. Uh, because if somebody sees that code, they can then use it and then stream through your account. There, there's no extra security. There's nothing to say, like if somebody else's OBS is set up and sent to my stream key, that it's not me doing that. So they can completely take over that kind of thing. Uh, but you need to get the, and the stream key is usually a, a bunch of different characters that are available that, um, that you can then copy and paste and put into this box here. Uh, and where do you get the stream key? I'll show, um, I won't show you the stream keys, but I will show you a couple of places where you can get them. So if you're in YouTube, when you set up YouTube finally, I'm gonna bring this down to here so you can actually see, and this is actually the view that I've been looking at uh, with YouTube the whole time. So uh, nobody sent any chat, but if you did, I would see it over here. I come over here to stream settings. When you, when you go live with it, you're gonna get this YouTube studio things. And so you can see the stream key is this section right down here. Um, and what happens is I can easily just copy it and then paste it over into uh, OBS. Um, YouTube is a little frustrating when it comes to this here because it will, it gives you a new stream key for every single live video that you want to do. There, there are ways I think to get a, I guess what they call a static or a fixed key, but I don't think I have it set up for that there. So it just means that every time I start a video, so like next Tuesday when I start Microsoft Word Basic, I have to come in here and get the unique stream key and go paste it into the settings in OBS. Uh, so that's YouTube, where you get that. You get that right there in the, when you go live, it, it comes up onto there. Uh, Twitch, let me show you here, because I have this set up here, is that um, if you you go into your creator dashboard, and under the preferences channel, it's right up here. This is the, the stream key that's right up there. And so once again, you can copy it and then paste it into OBS. And that's just, that's the key information that allows OBS to connect and has the rights to go and, and it has the privileges to send information out to that platform. So again, just as a matter of research, I, I won't show you Facebook because when I was looking at Facebook before, it show, it doesn't hide the Facebook key. And again, I don't want to show the key, but it's also available. If you go to like Facebook, if you do a search for Facebook Live, start streaming, uh, it will tell you how the steps to go through to be able to broadcast to Facebook and you're able to do all this different kind of stuff. So that's a lot of information. I have actually run long. Um, I actually was kind of worried that I was not going to actually have enough to fill up this class. But we, so um, thank you for anybody who attended. Um, if you are interested in continuing uh, to learn more about OBS and to and to have fun with this show, because live streaming can be a lot of fun. Live streaming and broadcasting, uh, it really can be a lot of fun, um, especially when people come in and kind of interact with you. Uh, for further reference, uh, for getting set up and working with it and such, um, the first thing I recommend is the OBS Projects Wiki page. Uh, they have a bunch of guides. They have a quick start guide as well as another uh, start guide in there that'll kind of walk you through and, and explain all the different features. I did notice today that it was a little bit outdated. It's, it's, it's uh, some of the information that it has is from a bit older version, but uh, most of it is still correct. So it's a good place there. Um, 
There's an article here from The Verge uh, that has some, and this is actually um, right from April of this year. So there's um, a lot of good information there about how to get started into streaming. Um, and it kind of it talks about the different platforms and everything that are available there. Uh, and then finally, um, Ferguson Library provides access to um, Udemy uh, for, through one of our partners, Gale. And it's a really great online video learning site uh, from a huge bunch of different topics. And I went and looked, and they actually have a course in there called um, Live Streaming Master, Case, Master Class, Start Live Streaming Like a Pro. Uh, and so if you follow this link here or from the Ferguson Library page out to the Udemy, uh, so you can get it on our A to Z page, um, show you here. If we come up here to under Learn and Explore Research A to Z, and go down to you. Uh, you can link out to udemy.com and they have a really, uh, really great, it's like a four and a half hour lesson that will really get into the nitty gritty of kind of streaming to different services and kind of ways to actually plan out and, and figure out your stream. Just like if you're doing a podcast, you're gonna sit down and plan things out. Uh, with a stream, you wanna kind of figure out what you're doing, uh, kind of make sure it looks as good as possible. So with all of that, the final thing I just want to share with you is um, I do wish if you um, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed and you followed along and you enjoyed this course, uh, please go and complete the survey here at www.projectoutcome.org slash responses slash 52348. And that will uh, allow you to give me feedback about how this course was. Um, whether you found it useful, uh, what parts you found good, uh, whether you would like to do it again, whether you're going to use this information. So with that, if you have any other questions, uh, you are free to send them in the chat or you can um, leave a comment on this video when it becomes available on there. Um, or you can contact us at the Ferguson Library. So with all of that, thank you very much. I hope you have a good night and I hope to see you next week for basic Microsoft Word. Remember to um, uh, check back often onto the website and onto online dash tech ferguslibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes to find our upcoming class schedule and to find resources for all of our other different classes.